discuss about the analysis of unbalanced faults. We will first start with an introduction to unbalanced faults. Then we will talk about how to solve for fault currents in case of line to ground fault, in case of line to line fault and double line to ground fault. On completion of this lesson, you should be able to develop the sequence network connections for line to ground, line to line and double line to ground faults. You should be able to solve for fault currents in case of line to ground fault, in case of line to line fault and in case of double line to ground fault. Well, as we had discussed earlier about the types of faults, the, we have said the most common fault which occurs is line to ground fault. The next most common is line to line to ground or double line to ground or line to line faults. These three faults which are much more common than the three phase to ground faults are basically asymmetrical faults because they create asymmetry in the current and voltage uh, in the three phases of the system. Whereas a three phase or a three phase to ground fault is basically a symmetrical fault because there in case of this fault the current and voltage symmetry in the three phases are maintained. Some other type of faults which are not short circuit faults but open circuit faults are also present and these are single line open faults or single phase open faults and two phase open faults or two lines open. Now these faults again create asymmetry in current and voltage because all the three phases ha do not have the same symmetry of current and voltages when these faults occur because if you take single phase open then there is no current in phase A if the line in phase A is open whereas there will be currents flowing in phase B and C and so on. Therefore, these are also asymmetrical faults. In this lesson, we will deal with the first three faults that we had talked about here. That's line to ground fault, line to line to ground, that's double line to ground fault and line to line faults. These are short circuit faults and basically when these short circuit uh, occur, heavy currents flow in the system and in order to protect the system we need to isolate the faults which as we had discussed earlier is done by the circuit breakers which gets the command from the protective relays and therefore to arrange for the settings of these protective equipment that is the relay settings and the circuit breaker ratings we need to compute the fault currents in the system in the event of these faults. Now we will talk about asymmetrical faults as we have said asymmetrical faults create unbalanced currents and voltages in the system that is the three phase symmetry of current and voltages are no longer maintained. Therefore, the single phase analysis which we could do can no longer be used in this case. Should we repeat the Therefore, we need to do a three phase analysis in this case because all the three phase currents and voltages need to be found out and this increases the complexity of the solution enormously. That is solving for the three phase system on a three phase basis is a, a much complex problem especially in case of large power systems. Now we would like to understand what happens and how we can try and solve this uh, problem. One of the things that we understand 
is that power system all the equipments are designed to operate as a balanced three phase system. That is under normal operating condition the power system is always operating as a balanced three phase system. This may not be exactly true, but more or less this condition is maintained in normal operating condition. The all the generators, the transformers, the motors all these are designed as a balanced three phase system. So, generators will generate a balanced three phase voltage and if a balanced load is connected to the system that balanced three phase currents will be flowing through the system. As far as transmission lines are concerned we have discussed that we do make the transmission lines symmetrical by using transposition and therefore, in this analysis we will assume that all equipment and elements in the power system are balanced three phase equipments and therefore, the system or the model for all the three uh, all the components in the power system are same as a balanced three phase system. Now, we have also seen in the earlier lesson that in case we have balanced three phase systems, then the if we do a symmetrical component transformation, then we will get three sequence networks that is the positive, negative and zero sequence networks which are independent of each other. So, when the system is a balanced three phase system, we get three uncoupled sequence networks. It is only when the fault occurs which creates a asymmetry, then there is a connection which gets made between the three sequence networks and the type of connection depends on the type of fault which has occurred. So, the three independent sequence networks for the system get connected at the point of fault in the manner dependent on the type of the fault. That is dependent on what type whether it is a line to ground fault or a double line to ground fault or a line to line fault the connection between the sequence networks will be different and this connection occurs only at the point of fault. Whereas, for the rest of the part of the system we have the sequence network as we have developed for the system. Now, in order to do the asymmetrical fault analysis we need to make the system representation for which we make certain kind of assumptions. For the system representation we assume that before fault system operates in balanced steady state condition. This is a valid assumption because when the fault has not occurred as we have said earlier the system operates as a balanced three phase system. Therefore, the positive negative and zero sequence networks are uncoupled before the fault. On application of the fault, fault current will flow and this fault current as we have seen earlier consists of an AC component and a DC offset current. Now, this AC component can be a subtransient current that we are looking at which means the current just at the time of application of the fault just after the time of application of fault or after some time we get the transient currents and if we are looking at a larger time frame then we get the synchronous or the steady state current flowing in the system. Generally as we have earlier discussed subtransient impedances are much smaller and therefore, subtransient currents are larger and therefore, most of the time we would be interested in finding out the subtransient current because that will determine the largest current and therefore, will be useful in finding the ratings for the equipments. Now, what do we do about this DC offset current? Generally, what we do is we compute only the AC current and 
for the DC offset current what we do is we use some kind of a multiplying factor to create or to get the maximum asymmetrical fault current flowing in the system. Now, as we have said earlier, before the fault occurred, the system works as a balanced three phase system. Therefore, pre fault current consists of only positive sequence current because we know that pre fault condition the system is balanced and only the positive sequence network has the voltage sources, whereas the negative and zero sequence network do not have any voltage source and therefore, if they are uncoupled from the positive sequence network, they are dead networks and no currents can flow in them and therefore, only positive sequence current flows in the system under pre fault condition that is when the system is balanced. For rotating machines, the internal voltages that is the voltages behind the subtransient, transient or synchronous impedance is computed and used in the positive sequence network. This is what we had seen when we talked about the symmetrical three phase fault analysis uh, in lesson 26. So, we compute the internal voltage of when the load current is flowing. Uh, we compute the internal subtransient voltage and we use this voltage with the subtransient reactance as the source voltage in the positive sequence network for the rotating machine models. Then we use Thevenin's theorem and network reduction to obtain the sequence network impedance between the fault point and the reference. So, we use the network reduction methods to obtain the Thevenin's equivalent reactance or impedance between the fault point and the reference for all the three sequence networks. However, in practice we make some more assumptions because we have said earlier that pre fault currents are generally much smaller compared to the fault currents. So, most of the time we neglect the load impedances from the system representation. The main assumptions that we make in case of uh, fault analysis is that pre fault bus voltage is 1 per unit. Now, this assumption is uh, very much valid because under normal operating condition the bus voltages in the power system are very near equal to 1 per unit. The voltages may be of the order of 0 0.98 to 0 0.1 uh, to 1.02 per unit kind of values. So, it is a valid assumption to assume that pre fault bus voltage is 1 per unit. We make another assumption that pre fault load currents are neglected that is we are assuming that before the fault occurred the system was unloaded. Now, this assumption appears to be somewhat uh, erroneous because certainly the system operates uh, and it is operating under some load conditions. However, if we look at this uh, phasor diagram where this is the voltage phasor then the load current phasor will be very much in phase with this uh, voltage phasor because the load currents will be having a power factor of the order of 0 0.85, 0 0.9 or so. So, therefore, the angle between the load current and the voltage will not be large. Whereas, we know that the resistance of most of the equipment and power system are much smaller than the reactants. So, basically when a fault occurs it will be the reactive current which will be flowing that is the current that we get when the fault occurs will be something like this. So, if on an unloaded system 
if a fault occurs the fault current will be something like this that is it will be lagging the voltage by almost 90 degrees. Now, if we want to see what will be the fault current when the fault occurs when the system was working under a load I L load current I L then we will get that fault current by doing the phasor addition of the load current and the fault current I F. So, we will this I F I capital F will give us the actual load current uh, fault current. Therefore, if we see these two currents we will find that these two currents will be very much in phase as well as very much equal in magnitude. In fact, if there is if the load uh, the fault current is say about 8 to 10 times larger than the load current then the error that we get in case of neglecting this load current is only of the order of 1 percent or so. Therefore, in most of the cases we do make this assumption that load current can be neglected that a system is working unloaded before the fault. So, pre fault load currents are neglected. Another assumption that we make is that all sequence impedances are reactive as I already said earlier that for most of the equipment in power system the reactance is much larger compared to the resistance and therefore, the resistance value is neglected most of the time. Also another assumption that we make is line capacitances are neglected. Well, this assumption is made mainly because the line capacitances are basically drawing the charging current and this charging current is much smaller than the load current even the load current and therefore, its effect is hardly there when the fault current flows and therefore, we can neglect this charging current which means we can neglect the line capacitances. Now, I will take up single line to ground fault. Now, here we are showing three phases A, B and C of uh, it may be a transmission line, may be terminal of a equipment, may be a bus bar. Here we are shown the fault has occurred on phase A with an impedance Z F to ground. So, this is a single line to ground fault on phase A with an impedance Z F. Now, we could have taken fault on any phase this A, B and C uh, has been put by us only. So, we could have put here B and C here and A here it does not matter. So, we could take fault on any phase A, B or C. For convenience we have taken this single line to ground fault on phase A. Now, if we remember the assumptions that we have made the, there we had said that the pre fault currents are 0. That means, the currents on phase B and C will be 0 that is I B and I C will be 0 phase A is faulted. So, there is going to be current flowing into the fault and therefore, this is the current that we would like to find out. So, the conditions are I B and I C is equal to 0 and also for this faulted phase A we have voltage between the fault point and ground that is V A G is equal to Z F the impedance into I F the current which is flowing through this impedance due to fault. So, Z F into I F which is same as the current I A because pre fault currents are 0. So, we have another condition as V A G which is the phase A voltage is equal to Z F into I A. <coughs> now, if we write these conditions to find out the symmetrical component currents flowing into the fault then we will write get I 0, I 1, I 2 the symmetrical component currents at the fault point. This is equal to the inverse of the symmetrical component transformation matrix which is 1 by 3 1 1 1 1 a a square 1 a square a this into the phase currents I a I b and I c. 
of course, here for the single line to ground fault condition we have I B is equal to I C is equal to 0. So, these two currents I B and I C are 0. So, if we now do this matrix multiplication, we will get this as equal to 1 by 3 I A that is 1 by 3 1 into I A plus 1 into 0 plus 1 into 0. So, this makes it 1 by 3 I A. Similarly, 1 by 3 into this 1 into I A plus A into 0 plus A square into 0. This again makes 1 by 3 I A. In the same way, we have also this I 2 is equal to 1 by 3 into 1 into I A plus A square into I B plus A into I C. So, that again gives us this I B I C being 0, this again gives us 1 by 3 I A. So, what we are getting is that at the fault point for a single line to ground fault, the three sequence currents I 0, I 1, I 2 all are equal to 1 by 3 I A. That is the sequence currents are equal. From the other condition that we have for the voltage V A G is equal to Z F into I A, we can write in terms of symmetrical component. For V A, we have V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 that is V A G or the voltage at on phase A at the fault point is V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 and this is equal to Z F into I A and I A is equal to I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2. So, we have these two relationship the sequence currents at the fault point I 0, I 1, I 2 all are equal to 1 by 3 I A and the voltage relationship V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 is equal to Z F into I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2. So, here we get 3 times Z F into I 1. So, V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 is equal to 3 times Z F into I 1. So, with these conditions for the sequence currents and voltage, if we draw the sequence network, then we have the positive sequence network, which is having the voltage at the faulted point, pre fault voltage at the faulted point V f. Since we have made an assumption that all pre fault voltages are 1 per unit, so this will be 1 per unit and this z 1, the positive sequence impedance up to the fault point, this is what will be the positive sequence network the zero sequence network will be Z 0 and the voltage across this is going to be V 0, the voltage across this is going to be V 1. Similarly, this is the negative sequence network with Z 2, the impedance, there is no voltage source for zero sequence and negative sequence network and the voltage across the negative sequence network is V 2. Now, we have V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 is equal to 3 times Z F into I 1. Now, since this V F is the vo only voltage source and I 1 is the current flowing here and I 1 is equal to I 0 which is equal to I 2. So, it shows that we are going to have a series connection between them and V 0 plus V 1 plus V 2 is equal to 3 times Z F into I 0 or I 1. So, this is going to give us the final connection between the sequence networks. So, this is what we get the sequence 3 sequence networks are connected in series with an impedance 3 Z F connected in series with this. So, from this network if we need to find out the currents, the current I 0 is equal to I 1 is equal to I 2 will be equal to the voltage V f here divided by all the impedances which are connected in series. So, Z 1 plus Z 0 plus 3 Z f plus Z 2. Therefore, we have here I 0 is equal to I 1 is equal to I 2 is equal to V f by Z 0 plus Z 1 plus Z 2 plus 3 Z f. And what is I f? I f is equal to I a which is equal to I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2 which is same as 3 I 1 
Therefore, this is equal to 3 times V f into Z 0 plus Z 1 plus Z 2 plus 3 Z f and this V f as we have said earlier, we assume it to be 1 per unit. Now, once we know this I a or I f, we can calculate the other phase currents also I b is equal to I 0 plus A square I 1 plus A I 2, which since I 0 is equal to I 1 is equal to I 2. So, this can be written as 1 plus A square plus A I 1, which is going to be equal to 0 only, because 1 and A square is basically lagging this by 240 degrees and this A is lagging 1 angle 120 degree. Therefore, this is what we are going to get. This is showing a unit phasor, three phase phasor, which is symmetrical and balanced. Therefore, the sum is equal to 0. Same thing for I c. I c is equal to I 0 plus A I 1 plus A square I 2. This again comes out to 1 plus A plus A square into I 1. This term again is a balanced unit phasor. So, this is 0. So, this we get I b is equal to I c which is 0. This is what we had seen earlier also when we described the condition in phase variables for a single line to ground fault. Now, let us take a small example to see how this works. We have two synchronous machines connected through a three phase transformers to the transmission line. That is the two machines are connected to each other by means of transformers and a transmission line as shown in the figure. The rating and the reactances of the machines and the transformers are machine 1 and machine 2 are rated at 100 MVA 20 kV and the direct axis subtransient reactance is equal to x 1 that is positive sequence reactance is equal to negative sequence reactance is equal to 12 percent on the base machine base. At 0, the 0 sequence reactance is 5 percent and the machine is connected, its neutral is grounded through a reactance of 4 percent. Transformer T 1 and T 2 are again rated at same 100 MVA 20 kV to 400 kV that is the line side voltage is 400 kV whereas, generator side voltage is 20 kV. The reactance of the transformer is 7 percent on the base of 100 MVA 400 kV that is on the high voltage side. It will be same on the low voltage side because we are using per unit system. The line reactances are x 1, x 2 is equal to 15 percent and x 0 is equal to 50 percent on 100 MVA 400 kV base. So, these reactances again since the transformer is 20 kV to 400 kV. So, these are also again on the same base. So, we do not need to convert them to different base. If the values are given at different bases, we need to convert them to the same base. The system is operating at normal voltage without prefault currents. That is, we are assuming the system to be unloaded before the fault. That is, prefault currents are assumed to be 0 and the voltages are 1 per unit. When a bolted that is Z f is equal to 0, single line to ground fault occurs on phase A at bus 3. Determine the subtransient current to ground at the fault. So, we have the system, this, this is a generator, These are this is the transformer T 1, this is a transmission line, this is another transformer T 2 and this is the motor connected. These are all having star grounded system, whereas the motor and the generators are grounded through and reactants. Now, the problem says a fault occurs on bus 3 on phase A, that single line to ground fault is occurring at this point. We need to find out the fault current. Now, first what we need to do is create the positive, negative and 0 sequence network for the system and find out the reduced network at the fault point. So, if we take the positive sequence network, then we are assuming the normal voltage which is 1 per unit for the generator and same is for the motor. The reactance of the generator 
is 12 percent, so J 0 0.12, the reactance of the transformer is 7 percent, that is J 0 0.07, the transmission line positive sequence reactance is given as 0 0.15 percent, that is J 0 0.15, the fault has occurred at this point, that is at the bus which connects the transmission line and the transformer on the motor side. So, this is the fault point and we have this transformer reactance having 7, 7 percent that is J 0 0.07, this is the subtransient reactance of the motor. So, this is J 0 0.1 to 12 percent. The voltage is given as 1 per unit since there was no current flowing initially. So, the voltage angles are also assumed to be 1 per unit uh, 0 degrees. So, this is our positive sequence network that we have. Now, what we need to do is find out the impedance between this F and the reference. So, what we do is we will short these two voltage sources and then find the impedance between these two points. So, that will show that this point 19 is in parallel with point 34. So, this is what we have written x 1 is equal to j 0 0.34 in parallel with j 0 0.19. This comes out to be this is equal to j 0 0.34 into j 0 0.19 divided by j 0 0.34 plus j 0 0.19 that gives the reactance to be 0 0.1219 between fault point and the reference and the voltage source here is 1 angle 0 degree. So, this is the reduced positive sequence network at the fault point. Similarly, we can draw the negative sequence network where everything is same except that there is no voltage sources for the generator or motor because there are no negative sequence generating sources. So, this is a dead network and between this fault point and the reference point, we can again find out the uh, reactance or the impedance for the negative sequence network. This again comes out to be same thing J 0 0.34 in parallel with J 0 0.19, which gives us J 0 0.1219. So, this is the reduced zero negative sequence network for the system with, ref with respect to the fault point. Now, for zero sequence network, what we have is negative uh, zero sequence reactance of the generator is 5 percent, which is J 0 0.05 and the grounding reactance is 4 percent. So, here we will get 3 times x n. So, we have got J 0 0.123 times 0 0.04. So, this will be the reactance here. Further transformer positive negative and zero sequence reactances are same. So, J 0 0.07, the transmission line zero sequence reactance is much higher and in the problem it is given that this is equal to 0 0.50. This is the fault point F, then the transformer reactance which is again 7 percent J 0 0.07, the machine or the motor reactance again is J 0 0.05 and this is the grounding reactance 3 times the grounding reactance to J 0 0.12. Again between fault point and reference we can reduce this network. This comes out to be X 0 is equal to J 0 0.74 in parallel with J 0 0.24. This comes out to be equal to J 0 0.1812. So, this is going to be the zero sequence reduced zero sequence network for the system. So, now what we have is for a single line to ground fault as we have seen, we have the three networks in series. So, this is the positive sequence network, this voltage source and the positive sequence reactance, zero sequence network, no source and the zero sequence reactance, the negative sequence network with the negative sequence reactance and no source. So, all these are connected in series. Now, this is 3 Z f is here, but here Z f is equal to 0 because the fault is a bolted fault. So, this is 0. So, what we need to do is calculate the fault current. So, first we will calculate the sequence current 
I0, I1, I2 all will be equal. So, I F0, I F1 and I F2 which is the fault current 0 sequence positive sequence negative sequence this is equal to V F this is 1 angle 0 divided by x 1 plus x 2 plus x 0 plus 3 z f this is 0. So, we substitute the value. So, I f 1 is equal to 1 90 degrees I am sorry this should be 0 degrees 1 0 degree this is the voltage source. So, 1 point 0 angle 0 degree this is there divided by x 1 plus x 2 plus x 0. So, j 0 0.1219 plus j 0 0.1219 plus j 0 0.1812. So, this comes out to be equal to j 2.353. So, this is the positive sequence current this is same as the negative sequence current this is same as the 0 sequence current. The total fault current I f will be equal to 3 times I f 0 or I f 1. So, this is equal to j minus j 7.059 that is 3 times this value. So, what we say is 7 per unit current flows in the fault when a single line to ground fault occurs at bus 3 of the system. Now, let us take another kind of fault that is line to line fault. Now, for line to line fault we have the fault occurring at any bus where between bus B and uh, sorry phase B and C are faulted through an impedance Z f. So, now since we have assumed no pre fault currents which means I A is equal to 0. So, fault conditions in phase domain are I A is equal to 0, I B is flowing like this I C is flowing like this. So, I B is equal to minus I C. So, I, I C is equal to minus I B and we have V B G that is voltage from this point to ground minus V C G that is V B C will be equal to Z F into I B, Z F into I B the current flowing in this direction. So, this is what is the condition for uh, the line to line fault in the system when the line to line fault occurs on phase B and C. Of course, A, B, C are only given by us, it can be phase B or C, I can always rename it as C, B, A or whatever we like. So, it basically means any two phases. So, generally we put this fault on phase B and C. So, this is the condition. Now, we would like to transform these conditions into sequence domain. So, we have sequence currents I 0, I 1, I 2 is equal to 1 by 3 into 1, 1, 1, 1 A A square 1 A square A. This is the A inverse matrix 1 by 3 into this and here the condition is I, I A is 0, I B we have and I C is equal to minus I B. So, if we to this multiplication what we find is this is I 0 is 0, then we have I 1 is equal to 1 by 3 A minus A square I B and I 2 is equal to 1 by 3 A minus A square I B. I am sorry this should be minus here minus 1 by 3 a minus a square i b or it can be 1 by 3 a square minus a i b. If you see from here i 2 is equal to 1 by 3 1 into 0 then a square into i b and minus a into i b. So, this should be a square minus a into i b or minus 1 by 3 a minus a square i b. I am sorry this is a mistake here it should be minus here. So, and we have I A is equal to I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2 which is equal to 0 and I 1 is equal to minus I 2. So, this is one condition that we get that is I 1 is equal to minus I 2. Now, from V B G minus V C G is equal to Z F into I B we can substitute the value. So, V B we are substituting here 
in terms of sequence voltages and V c we are substituting here in terms of sequence voltages. So, V b minus V c is equal to Z f into I b and once we organize this equation then we get a square minus a into v 1 minus a square minus a into v 2 is equal to z f a square minus a into i 1. So, this a square minus a will cancel out in all of them. So, v 1 minus v 2 is equal to z f into i 1. So, this is the other condition that we have v 1 minus v 2 is equal to z f into i 1. So, we see that i 0 is equal to 0 that means, the 0 sequence network is open and since there is this network there is no voltage source. So, this V 0 has no meaning. So, this network is a dead network as such. We have I 2 is equal to minus I 1. So, this is the positive sequence network and this is the negative sequence network and this current I 2 is flowing in this direction and I 1 is flowing in this direction. So, I 2 is equal to minus I 1 or I 1 is equal to minus I 2 and also we have this is the voltage V 1 here and this is the voltage V 2 here V 1 minus V 2 is equal to Z f into I 1 V 1 minus V 2 is equal to Z f into I 1 current flowing here. So, Z f into I 1. So, this is the sequence network connection that we get that is positive and negative sequence network are connected across each other through and impedance Z f. So, now again we can work out for a line to line fault for the same system with the fault occurring at the same point that is at bus 3. So, we take the same example the positive sequence network reduced to the fault point is the same one negative and zero sequence network which we have already done in the earlier example. So, now the sequence currents can be calculated as follows I f 1 is equal to minus I f 2 and this will be equal to what? If you see here this is V f. So, V f divided by Z 1 plus Z f plus Z 2. So, and since Z f is equal to 0. So, we have V I f 1 is equal to minus I f 2 is equal to V f by Z 1 plus Z 2 which is 1 angle 0 divided by J 0 0.1219 plus J 0 0.1219 which comes out to be equal to I f 1 will come out to be equal to J minus J 4.102 and if we see what is the current I f A, I f A is equal to I f 1 plus I f 2 plus I f 0 since I f 0 is equal to 0. Therefore, I f A that is fault current in phase A is equal to this plus this. If we see this then this comes out to be 0 because this is the value that we will get for I f 1 and I f 2 is negative of that. So, this is equal to 0. I f B is equal to A square I f 1 plus A I f 1 plus sorry A I F 2 plus I F 0 I F 0 is 0. Therefore, this is equal to minus J 4.102 minus 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.866 this is A square and then this is A into I F 2 this is I F 2 I am sorry. So, this is equal to this. So, when we do add this up we will get this as equal to minus 7 point 105 plus J 0 point 0 and since I f c is equal to minus I f b therefore, this is equal to 7 point 105 per unit. So, we can calculate the phase currents in phase A, B and C for the fault line to line fault which has occurred between phase B and C the fault currents as we see here are 7.105 per unit or 7 times the rated current on the system. Next we will take double line to ground fault. Now, here 
but the conditions are again very similar to the line to line fault that we had except that these two lines are faulted to the ground through an impedance ZF. Now, again here pre fault conditions the currents are pre fault currents are 0. So, I A is equal to 0. Now, V B is equal to V C because these are shorted and this will be equal to Z F into I F and what will be I F? I F will be this current I B and this current I C. So, the current here is going to be sum of these two currents. So, I F is equal to I B plus I C. So, fault conditions in phase domain I A is equal to 0, V C G is equal to V B G that is V C is equal to V B and V B G is equal to Z F into I B plus I C. So, this voltage V B or V C is equal to Z F into I B plus I C which is same as I F. Now, again saying I A is equal to 0 means I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2 is equal to 0. This way, this condition that we get the other one for the voltage we can write V 0 V 1 V 2 is equal to this is A inverse into V A V B V C. Now, V C is equal to V B. So, we have substituted it like this. Now, from here we get V 0 plus A V 1 plus A square V 2 is equal to V 0 plus A square V 1 plus A V 2, which tells us that V 1 is equal to V 2. Okay. So, and V B is equal to Z F into I B plus I C. So, again substituting the values of V B, we are writing plus Z F into I B plus I C and then again taking help of V 1 is equal to V 2 and A square plus A is e plus 1 is equal to 0 or A square plus A is equal to minus 1. We will get finally on organizing this all these terms in this as V 0 minus V 1 is equal to Z F into 2 I 0 minus I 1 minus I 2 and this we can write as Z F into 2 I 0 minus I 1 plus I 2 like here which is same as Z F into 2 I 0 minus I 0 because we have I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2 is equal to 0. So, I 1 plus I 2 is equal to minus I 0. This we get from sorry this we get from here I 1 plus I 2 is equal to minus I 0. So, we have this this comes out to be 3 Z F into I 0. So, V 0 minus V 1 is equal to 3 Z F into I 0. V 1 is equal to V 2 and I 0 plus I 1 plus I 2 is equal to 0. So, these are the conditions that we have got which tells us the sequence network connections are going to be like this. V 1 is this, this is the positive sequence network, V f is the voltage source, Z 1 is the impedance and V 1 is the voltage between the fault point and the reference. We have the negative sequence network which is only having Z 2 no source and the voltage across this is equal to V 2. So, V 1 is equal to V 2. So, this will be connected across this and then we have this is the value V 1 V 1 V 0 minus V 1 is equal to 3 Z F into I 0. So, V 0 is this is Z 0 and the voltage across this is V 0. So, V 0 minus V 1 is equal to 3 Z F into I 0. So, 3 Z F into I 0. So, this is this current is flowing like this I 0. So, 3 Z F into I 0 is the drop here. So, V 0 minus V 1 is equal to 3 Z F I 0. This condition is put here. So, this is the final network that we get interconnected sequence network for double line to ground fault. Again, we will take uh, same example except that in this case we have taken the fault to occur at bus 4. So, again the fault is with Z f is equal to 0 
uh, double line to ground fault at bus 4. So, what we need to do is we need to compute the sequence network at the fault point. So, we have drawn the positive sequence network which is same as what we have drawn earlier except that the fault point is here. So, now we need to find out the reduced network between fault and reference which we if we do which comes out to be J 0 0.0928 because this part is this impedance is around J 0 0.41 this impedance J 0 0.12 they are in parallel. So, this on reduction finally, comes out to be this much. Similarly, negative sequence network again since the impedances are same. So, the value of x 2 is also same that is J 0 0.0928. Now, for 0 sequence again we can calculate the value here now this comes out to be the network is same except that the fault point is here. So, we add these impedance this comes out to be point 0.81. So, J 0, 0 0.81 and this is 0.17. So, J 0 0.17 in parallel this comes out to be J 0 0.1405. So, this is the network here. Now, we connect these networks as we have shown V 1, V 2 in parallel and V 0 and that is Z 0 and 3 Z f in series connected in parallel with that. So, this is what we get V f this is the positive sequence impedance this is the negative sequence impedance this is 3 Z f is Z f is 0. So, this is 0 and this is the 0 sequence impedance. So, interconnected sequence network will be like this we can get the positive sequence current as if you see here this will be this V f divided by the impedance this impedance plus these two impedances in parallel. So, that is what we have done Z 1 plus Z 1 Z 0 that is it should be Z 2 Z 0 Z 2 is same as Z 1. So, it is Z Z 2 Z 0 Z 1 Z 0 divided by Z 1 plus Z 0. So, this is coming out to be equal to J minus J 6.747. Similarly, I, we can calculate I f 2 which will be again if we look at this diagram this is I 1 this gets divided into these two parts right and the part flowing in this is going to be inversely proportional to this impedance and the sum of these two impedances. So, that is what we have got here I f 1 minus I f 1 into Z 0 divided by Z 2 plus Z 0 when we do that we get this as J 4.06 per unit. Similarly, I f 0 can be computed as minus I f 1 into Z 2 by Z 2 plus Z 0. So, substituting values this comes out to be J 2.684 per unit and once we have got these positive negative and 0 sequence currents at the fault point we can calculate the phase A current that is I 0 F A plus I 1 F A plus I 2 F A positive negative and 0 sequence fault currents. This when we add up this comes out to be 0. This is what we had seen in the very beginning that there is no current flowing through phase A. I F B again we substitute the values and then we calculate this comes out to be 10.188 with an angle of 156.7 degrees. Similarly, I f c after substituting the values comes out to be again 10.188 with an angle of 23.284 which shows the values for these two currents. So, we know the fault currents in all the three phases. So, with this we will stop today in the next class we will talk about some other asymmetrical faults that is the open circuit faults and then we will take up some example and we will see how we do this fault analysis for large power systems. What are the problems that we have to face when we work it out for large power systems. Thank you.
Welcome to lesson 29 on power system analysis. In this lesson, we will continue with unbalanced fault analysis. The symmetrical faults that we were considering in the previous lectures were the short circuits. In this lecture, we will consider the open circuit faults. So, here we will start with an introduction, then we will discuss one line open fault and then two line open fault and after that we will discuss a little about fault analysis for large power systems. Well, on completion of this lesson, you should be able to develop sequence network connections for open circuit faults and you should be able to explain the objectives of fault analysis for large power systems. As we discussed in the previous lesson, the, there are different kinds of faults which occur in power system such as line to ground fault or line to line to ground faults and line to line faults. These are asymmetrical faults. Similarly, three phase to ground faults, there is a symmetrical fault. All these faults are basically short circuit faults, whereas we have other types of faults which are basically open circuit faults like a single phase open that is one line uh, gets open or two line gets open. In both these cases, the fault again is an asymmetrical fault because the voltage and currents in all the three phases are not balanced or symmetrical. Now, when we uh, one question which comes to mind is we can understand studying the short circuit faults because in case of short circuit heavy currents are going to flow in the circuit and we need to protect our equipment from damage because of this heavy current. What happens in case of open circuit faults? Well, open circuit faults in most of the cases will lead to over voltages and that is why we need to study them because these over voltages can sometimes cause insulation failure and thereby resulting in a short circuit. So, we need to study these open circuit faults also to make sure that our system design for insulation can take care of the over voltages caused by the open circuit faults. So, that is if you see the system we can define this is a n bus power system in which we have taken this bus q at which the fault has occurred. The fault impedance is z f and the a b c phase voltages are shown here for the bus q. So, with this we end today in the next lesson we will talk about how to develop an algorithm for short circuit studies on large power systems. Thank you very much.